Did you know that the word vignette actually comes from the same word root as vine? Vines were originally used to decorate the edges of pages in books. These days, vignetting refers to a darkening or fading effect that you see towards the edges of photo or video. Sometimes it's an undesirable look that can come from using a cheaper or poor quality lens, but most often vignettes are actually added to images in the editing process to help draw attention to the subject. Let's take a look at how you can create effective and subtle looking vignettes that don't look like they came from the 80s. Hi, I'm Charlotte Reeves from Unleashed Education and you've tuned in to another Editing Toolbox video where we share a quick tip, trick or technique to help make your pet photography editing life easier. So in this video, we're going to be talking about vignetting. Now, vignetting can actually come from the lens itself, and it's a pretty common feature of most lenses. Generally, the wider angle lenses or the poorer quality lenses will have more natural vignetting. Let's take a look at some examples. So let's start with wide angle lenses first. This is a RF 24 millimeter lens. It's a pretty new lens, but it's a bit of a budget lens. It's an F 1.8 macro. It's not one of Canon's L series lenses, so it's not the highest quality available. So this is a sort of vignetting that you can expect to see. I've done a few edits on this already. You can definitely see the natural darkness around the edges. Now in Lightroom, if we go to the lens corrections panel, we can actually tick enable profile corrections and that will apply corrections to the image based on which lens was used. So another thing that it does correct at the same time is distortion. We're not talking about that today, but as you can see, there's a lot of distortion in that lens as well. I've left that as it is. Now the vignetting correction that it's applied has gone from this to this. See how it's taken that darkness on the edges away. You can also push that even further to completely get rid of the vignetting if you really want to start from scratch in your edit. So I'll just take that correction off. Let's go to the next image. So this one here also shot with the same lens. So this one here, as you can see, it was shot in a very open location at the beach and you can really see how dark it is in the corners. It's really not a good look for such an open location like this. If we view this image a lot smaller, so let's go and have a look at it at 25% you can really notice that vignetting and it's really just not a good look. So if you're editing this kind of image, you probably want to remove that vignetting. And we'll jump back into the develop module and just tick enable profile corrections. Now, as you can see, it's applied distortion correction as well, which is kind of neither here nor there, I reckon, with these lenses. And it's actually removed a lot of that vignetting. You can still see it a little bit in the corner, so if you wanted to completely get rid of it, you would just need to take that vignetting slider to the right. Let's jump to a different lens. So this is a high quality lens. This is the RF 28 to 70 mil F2, also a Canon lens. It's an L series lens. So it does tend to have better performance when it comes to vignetting. However, at 28 millimeters, which is the widest that this zoom lens goes, you can definitely still see some vignetting in the corners. And again, it looks a bit weird when it's a photo that has the sky where you wouldn't really expect to see any darkening in real life. So let's just tick enable profile corrections. See how that gets rid of that quite nicely. You might even like to take a little bit more out of that. Now, not all natural lens vignetting is a bad thing. Let's jump to another lens. So this is the Canon 135mm f1.8 prime lens. And as you can see, you're not really seeing a lot of heavy darkening in the corners of the image. The vignetting that's there is really subtle. If we tick enable profile corrections, you'll see that the vignetting actually comes a lot further into the image. It's a lot more graduated and a lot more subtle. And it actually, I think, contributes to the appearance of the image. It's actually quite a nice effect. So that's kind of the difference between a lower quality wide angle lens and then a better quality lens at a longer focal length. This next one here, workhorse lens, good old RF 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. This also has some natural vignetting. It's a little bit darker towards the edges, but again, it's really nice and subtle and it comes a long way into the image and contributes to the look. If we enable profile corrections here, it doesn't make a great deal of difference really. So you might be wondering why we're first talking about removing the vignetting from images. Well, sometimes you might just want a bit of a clean slate to start with. If there's existing vignetting in the image and you want to create a 
custom vignette, it might sort of interfere with the look that you're going for. So it's good to know how to remove any undesirable vignetting first. So what about creating vignetting in an image and why would you want to do this? Generally, when you're looking at an image, your eye is attracted to areas that are brighter, areas that are sharper or have more detail, or areas of higher contrast. Adding a vignette is a really great way to get the viewer's attention towards parts of the image that you want them to look at. And generally, that's not the edges. So it's a good way to get them away from the edges. So darkening, reducing contrast, Anything that you can do to adjust those edges of the image that make them a little bit less interesting is gonna help direct attention to the subject. So what is the best way to add a vignette in Lightroom? Let's just take a look at this image here. I've actually got two virtual copies of this. We're gonna add a vignette in two different ways and then talk about which is the most effective. So the first way to do this is in the effects panel here under post crop vignetting. You've got a few different sliders here, so let's go through and see what they do. So this amount slider here, that basically tells you how dark the vignette's going to be. Take it to the left, it gets very dark. Take it to the right, it gets very light, which again is not something that you probably want to be doing. I'll jump down to the feather slider next. So the feather, surprise, surprise, determines how much the effect is feathered. So if you take it to the left, it takes the feathering down and gives you a very defined edge. If you take it to the right, it feathers it a lot further. So let's leave that about there. Now, roundness, so that will determine whether the vignette sort of sticks to the corners or whether it becomes more of a round kind of shape. So the further that gets to the right, the rounder the vignette becomes. You've also get midpoint as well. So the midpoint will either bring it in or take it out so it's right on the corner. That's one way to do a vignette. Let me show you a different way that I feel is a lot better. So with this image here, I really feel that I want to draw attention just to this section of the image. Now the subject is actually a little bit down from the center. So because the subject isn't placed centrally, I actually want more darkness to come from the top of the image than the bottom. I want to put the subject at the center of the vignette. Now we can't do that in the effects panel, but we can add a mask. So I've got one here that I prepared earlier. So I've just turned that off. Let me just turn that on. So let's have a look and see what this is comprised of. So this is basically a radial gradient that I've drawn out from the center of the subject. You don't have to keep it completely round. Sometimes you might wanna change the shape of it a little, but you do wanna center it on the subject. Now what I've tried to do here is actually have this vignette kind of follow the line, the natural sort of lines of the image. I've got the top border on this line of the trees here, and then I've got the bottom border on the line of the path. And I feel that gives a really nice natural effect. The other crucial part is you will need to make sure that this radial gradient is inverted. So when you first draw it, it'll only apply the adjustment to the center. So clicking this little invert tick box here actually applies the adjustment to the edges of the image instead of the center. So let's take a look at the adjustments that I've made here. Basically, I've just pulled the exposure down and I've also taken the contrast down because going back to what I was saying earlier, the eye is less drawn to areas that have less contrast. So you wanna take the contrast down as well and that gives a softer kind of appearance. So this gives a pretty heavy vignetted effect, but because it's a custom vignette and we've created it using a radial gradient, I think it's created a much nicer effect than this method, which is just using the post crop vignetting sliders. It's a much more natural, much more subtle and better overall result. Let's just take a look at one more image. So this one here, I've already done some adjustments to. I haven't added any sort of vignetting. It was shot with a 50 mil lens. So this 50 mil lens actually has some really nice vignetting attributes. So I don't tend to apply any lens corrections beforehand. So let's just take a look at a post crop vignette with this image here. Now let's just take the amount down. Uh, this sort of image responds really, really nicely to a vignette. I'm gonna take the midpoint in a little bit. Okay, so this is the vignette that I've got. Now, the problem with this is the subject is not centered. The subject is off to the left a little bit. So I kind of feel like I want to center the vignette over the subject for a better result. So I'm actually going to create a fresh vignette here so you can see it right from the start. So I'm going to grab a radial gradient. 
going to pull it out from the subject and I'm going to sort of make it a, a taller sort of circular shape and I'm going to sort of center it around the subject's face and head. Then we just need to tick invert. I'm going to press O on the keyboard to turn that red overlay off so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And then I'm just going to take the exposure down but also the contrast down. And I think that is quite nice. So it really darkens off the edges of the image, but it does in a very graduated, natural kind of way, which I think is a lot nicer than this kind of look. It's just so much more subtle, it looks natural, and I think it's a much more effective result. So hopefully that's been helpful for you. Go in and have a play with the radial gradients as an alternative for creating vignettes in Lightroom. Have fun, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.